Dying Light 2 is a bad game. Released in 2022, not only lacked standard features like dynamic weather or shadows, but lacked most of the stuff that was promised and stuff that was in the first game. Like dynamic weather and shadows. But if it's a bad game, why all this love? Why I can't stop playing it and even though it has all these flaws, community still loves it, but not as much as they love the first game. In this video I will focus on Dying Light 2, but I will compare it to the original just to prove my point. I won't make a statement about which game is better, cause they both have different identities. The gameplay consists of both parkour and fighting, just like in the first game, and the devs combine these two to create parkour combat, which is useful, but only for the style rather than actual combat. The parkour itself is more fluid than in the first game, but apart from the first game, I had to install multiple mods to enjoy the experience much more, which is something I never did in Dying Light 1. The only mod I ever installed in Dying Light 1 let me use watch whenever I wanted to and it added a great chunk to immersion in a game about managing time. On the other hand, we don't even have a watch in Dying Light 2. What we have is that preset that indicates your infection level called biomarker and you remember that small animation in Dying Light 1 when the night was about to start? Yeah, it's not in Dying Light 2. Aiden doesn't even have an option to look at his biomarker throughout the night, which is great damage to overall experience in my opinion, because imagine this scenario. It's 3am and you just had close call with volatiles chasing you through this entire city and you find a safe spot to hide. You check your biomarker and you are about to turn. You have to either take your last immunity booster and run into the safe zone and call it a night, or you can explore abandoned shop for more resources to create more boosters and get more loot. And you can make these decisions only if you can look at your biomarker. But instead, you have an icon above your head at all times that tells you how much immunity you have left. And you can turn that off in hood, but when you turn that off, how can you look at your biomarker then? This takes me to the first point of this video, immersion. Immersion is basically killed at the start of the game where you can pick your first skill which is called high jump. That makes you well jump higher, but the gimmick is that the longer you hold jump button the higher you will jump. So the shorter press will make the jump shorter. But the jump itself is unnaturally high and floaty and the gameplay itself feels floaty too and the skills you unlock throughout the game reinforce you into thinking that Aiden might be on some kind of steroids. The devs explain it this way that Aiden actually is enhanced, that's why he jumps so high and all, but doesn't explain why Aiden can't one hit a walker. There are RPG elements in the game like weapon stats and armor and these are poorly made. I played on hard difficulty since day one and I never felt like armor is doing anything. At some point I was using what looks cool but because at that time there was no transmog in the game and I was nerfing myself to make the game better. But it shouldn't be that way, where I have to do it all myself, even though I was already playing on hardest difficulty. And you have levels in the game, the regular walker that is on level 1 now is on level 9 and you can't kill it easily unless you have a pumped up weapon. But the immersion is broken further when you notice that the zombie on level 1 looks exactly the same like zombie on level 9. In Dying Light 1 you had progression in zombies. At the beginning of the game you only had weak walkers that had like white skin that you could kill in one hit even with a pipe. And even then combat is not advised cause there are hordes and without skills you can easily get overwhelmed. But as the game progresses, you unlocked better weapons and more skills, the zombies started to become more dangerous too. New variants started to appear on the street, the zombies themselves were hitting so strong that Crane could fall on ground. They had harder skin that was visible and the virus was creating these ugly blobs on their bodies and zombies were more decayed but at the same time, the Haram virus was making them stronger. Even when you got to the Sector Zero aka Old Town, you get a line from Troy that the zombies there are harder to kill and more ferocious. It was all immersive and explained in the lore. 
On the other hand, you have Dying Light 2, where in Old Virador you fight a zombie with a red coat, and in Central Loop you fight zombie with red coat, but now on level 9. There is no lore to it, even though these two places are isolated, as it was in Dying Light 1, and you don't even notice that it's the thing. The secret couldn't pull off what the first game did 9 years ago. We didn't even get alpha volatiles, instead we had to wait for an update for Thailand volatiles that are appearing on the end game. And at this point you have overpowered weapons to kill them in 3 or 4 hits. I won't go further into the immersion cause the video would be like 10 hours long but I'll just make a short list of things that should have been different. Like much different. The colors of obstacles, the connection between two maps, HUD, crafting, consumables themselves, fighting, armor system and more. And now let's talk about the game. The gameplay itself is fairly visceral, especially after gut feeling update, but it's still far from what a game of this caliber should present. Even the Dylan 2 after being in development hell for almost 10 years put it off better and there is fair amount of comments about how even Dying Light 1 had better gore. The weapons are a mixed bag. On one hand you have machetes and axes and that basically work the same and I'm pretty sure that these two categories have the same hitboxes. The heavier weapons lack this impact and even after installing blast mods they still feel underwhelming compared to the first game. Don't get me wrong, it's still fun to hit zombies with various weapons but after some time it's feeling mediocre. And now let me take you back to the glorious 2018 days. Stuff that we can't touch on but... I want one of my favorite things in the game is uh, the weapon system, the weapon crafting and stuff. Uh, is there like I, I'm sure there's going to be that's going to be in the game, but can you tell us if there's going to be like some new things? Well, there'll be a lot of new weapons okay. in the game uh, for sure. The weapon crafting will be a bit reworked because we okay. changed the combat uh, in Dying Light 2 into uh, the way it's more tactical, the way it's more. Uh, giving you more satisfaction in certain bits, certain moments. So the weapon crafting fill the gap and it creates a lot of emergent uh, situations that create the satisfaction moments. Uh, yeah, it, it will be more complicated and more complex, so I guarantee you won't be disappointed. Very cool, very cool. There is a scene in 2019 demo where Aiden has a upgraded machete but it breaks after some hits and he throws it away and in another scene where Aiden slides under a door picking up a table leg the weapon breaks after 3 hits and in another scene Aiden picks up a machete and it doesn't say that the machete was legendary or had some damage stats. This means that in 2019, devs had a totally different weapon system for the game, where you would change weapons constantly and those were really withered weapons, kind of like The Last of Us where you have like 9 hits before pipe breaks, so you constantly have to look for another one. And this system where you would scavenge for weapons would work perfectly for Dying Light 2, but it's clearly visible that something went wrong where from table leg that lasts only 3 hits we get to this somewhat iconic hatchet that lasts for 40 hits, it's like 40 zombies killed. And then you get a weapon like upgraded last hope that has durability of 350. That's like 350 zombies killed with one weapon. And you can't even fix it. I mean after recent updates you can, but it's not immersive like it was in Dying Light 1. Instead you go to Craft Masters, straight from Destiny, that fixes your inventory if you pay him in scraps and other materials. And scavenging for supplies is trivial, it takes only 20 minutes of just jumping around, around city from beehive to beehive to have 99 medkits where in Dying Light 1 you had to discover the secret military outpost to farm gauzes. And still you could only find like 40 there. The world is poorly crafted, you have copy paste buildings everywhere, the resources after 15 years of apocalypse are, are plentiful and even when you play on hard the game is easy. The only downside is that you sell items for much much less price but guess what, there is no penalty for switching to easy mode and it happens in seconds and bam. Now you can sell a code for 10k rather than 300 coins. It's not fair that it works like that and I get that I could just play on hard and grind for these items but what's the point when it literally takes 2 seconds to switch difficulty and just get rich easily. 
And as I mentioned earlier, Techland had totally different plans for combat in the sequel, but it turned out to be just basic generic system that we had in Dying Light 1 and basically any other game nowadays. And in Dying Light 1 you couldn't parry human enemies, so your only reserve was to just slash and dice until it's done. And in Dying Light 2 you can parry enemies and do every other stuff, but during combat it's very useless because Vought kick deals like 1 eighth of HP and your fire scythe that deals almost 1k damage not only ignores parries but it instantly one shots everything, even volatile. So what's the point of parkour combat where slashing and dicing until it's done is a much better way to solve your problems. And with new coming update with guns, the entire system will be broken even further. In 2019 we had Scorpio and Death say that it's a new addition. And it wasn't in the game. But the thing is that it might come back in the new update, but it might not be what we all expect it to be. So not only the combat in the game is improved, it has many flaws just like parkour does. And even with all these flaws and faults, whether something was supposed to be in the game or was cut entirely during development, weak combat and somewhat better parkour, it all combines into a very mediocre game that could even be considered a bad game. But even with all these flaws, we still love the game. Why? I won't talk about the story and activities because let's just say that the story is straight up bad, but I somehow enjoyed it personally, to some degree of course. Maybe it's because I just like shitty things for some reason, and activities are basically everything you've already seen. You have outposts, radio towers and dungeons aka GRE quarantine zones. There is nothing innovative or unique in this area, so it's not even worth talking about, so I'ma just make it quick. There are activities that just exist for you to waste your time on them, but once you realize that the game is very easy, you just do them out of board. But why we still love it? Maybe it's, it's the, weather. the weather. Maybe it's the adrenaline rush when we are chased at night. There are literally vault tiles everywhere. Like, all four of us would have to get okay. this fucking vault tile right now. Let's get up there. They're everywhere. I know. Yeah, I like Tony and I's plan. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it's just Techland's soul poured into the game. Even with all these flaws, it's visible that Techland wanted to create something great that lives up to the legacy of Dying Light 1. And if they didn't fire Avalon, it's if they actually put all their soul and efforts into the game, we could get a contender for Elden Ring, which was the biggest premiere of 2022. Avalon was responsible for two best fallouts, he directed Knights of the Old Republic 2, he made amazing lore for Prey, and having him on board during production of Dying Light 2 would change everything. Let me just have a second to cry in the corner about it. The showcase of 2018 was a glimpse of a masterpiece. The gameplay of 2019 looked like finished product that everyone was hyped to play and in 2020 everything went to hell. So, why the love? It's something I actually can't answer to you. It's like the Dying Lights community is intertwined and we just like the game despite its flaws because we are fans that still root for Techland. And we are still here, faithful during Techland's worst, waiting for better times. DLC 2 is coming and they have more writers for it and big plans and since everyone in community is talking about Dirt Bike, I really believe that Aiden will get one. And I think it's just pure love that Techland was trying to put into the game and is consistently trying with the new updates, with the new events and even with small fixes. And that's why we give the love back, because we still love it at its worst. I'm rooting for Techland to release DLC 2 in a great condition and I will always be with you, me and probably everyone in the community. And sorry to ruin this emotional ending, but if Techland ever notices me and watches this video, I just want to ask why. Like, you could have just hold entire thing, call it a day and, and release it after you actually had an idea what the game was supposed to be. And I really hope you learn from this mistake, because after Avalon was cleared of his charges, you could have just continued on work with him. That's how you create the games anyway today, they just stay in 
development for 10 years and turn out to be like 10 out of 10 masterpieces. And I really hope that DLC 2 will pan out and will be a great addition to the entire, entire Dying Light lore. And after all you have Shadow of the Earth Tree to compete with and you couldn't pick more unfortunate date again. So finish the show with a big bang and see you in DLC 2. Thank you.